All right, so where we stop as uh stop at at last week class was uh this andayan principle dan batasan dalam perakunan. All right, so we will be going through this part and also this entity perniagaan. So we talking about the four entity perniagaan, the milikan tunggal, the perkongsian, syarikat, and also the cooperasi. Okay, but before that, uh, let's refresh uh, what we have learned from last class. And I already given you the homework for these two questions, short questions. So uh, I'll just quickly discuss with you and give you the answer, all right, to make sure that uh, you get the correct answer for it. Okay, so are you guys ready? If you are ready, give me a ready in the chat box. Tap ready in the chat box if you are. So let's see who is ready and who is not ready. So let's see. Alex is ready. Okay, wait, wait. Start from Tivina first. Okay, Tivina. Then Alex is ready as well. Shivashin is ready. Hema is ready. Harris is ready. Damia, yes. Alia Husna, Aranya, Chiao Yi, Hui Ying. And who is not ready? Let's see. Mm, you want me to call your name? Hopefully not. Okay. So if you are in, you're ready. Give me a ready. Yes. Xing Rose is ready. Yes. Let's go. Question three. So, menyediakan pelaporan maklumat perikanan kepada pengguna dalaman dan pengguna luaran untuk membuat keputusan. So when we see this kind of function, by the way, what are the four sub bidang? So you have to know what are the four sub bidang perikanan. So there are four. All right. The uh, perikanan kewangan, right? And then the perikanan pengurusan, the management accounting, and then the pengauditan. And lastly is the percukaian. All right, so these are the empat sub bidang perakunan. So let's say this one, untuk menyediakan pelaporan. So who are the one that normally prepare the pelaporan maklumat perakunan? Okay, so for the use of the pengguna tanaman dan pengeluaran. So this is uh, normally the perakunan kewangan yang do it. Okay, you can write perikanan kewangan or you just write shortcut kewangan. So as long as you understand what it is. Alright, so the second one, meliputi kerja memeriksa. So whenever you see the memeriksa document, you should know what it is. Alright, then the record, so let's see. Yes, Harry said pengauditan, correct. So audit is always on checking. All right, just like a permeriksa. All right, so this is peng or did done. Okay, then the uh, the record kewangan untuk mengesahkan rekaman makanan adalah betul dan tepat. So this is what an auditor does. Okay, now we go to the third one. Merancang how how pejo. Sure, we tell you the pejo kayan. Menyediakan penyata cukai bagi pihak syarikat. So definitely. So very straightforward. The answer is percukaian. So last one, menyediakan maklumat perikanan seperti kawalan, perancangan, dan pengurusan pengeluaran. So these are all the areas of a what pengurusan, pengakunan, pengurusan management accounting. So when you go back to the nota. So I believe that all the things that mentioned here mostly are already uh, mentioned in this field of nota. All right. So that, like what? Just now they say, uh, menyediakan pelanjaman untuk perancangan pengurusan. Okay. So it's pengurusan lah. Is that not? So they are talking memeriksa. So it's pengauditan. And then you, when you talk about cukai, then it is definitely percukaian. And then the membuat pelaporan is normally the perikanan kewangan. So are you guys all right with it? Okay lah. If okay, you give me okay. Easy, right? Super easy. So this is the beginning, introduction, pengenalan. 
All right, so it is just that straightforward, simple. But then the main point is, the main objective is to let you understand that there are buts and bidang. Okay? And I say, we won't go in one by one. Okay, We won't be learning everything here because we are still at the... Now for Form 4, Form 5, we are at the what? Introduction level. And you know what? The basic level. Uh, so whatever you learn in Form 4, Form 5 are all basics here. Okay, sangat simple punya. But then when you move on, let's say to degree or diploma or degree level, or even when you go to become a professional, you know, and build professional courses, professional uh, courses or program. So what are the professional courses? Example, what we have learned last week, ACCA, CIMA, CPA. ICAEW, all these are professional accounting courses. Okay, so when we go in here, uh, we will learn more in depth. Okay, so we go digging in more. But now we are learning on the surface uh, here. here. Uh, these are the things that we cover at. But then in accounting, it's like a tall building. Okay, we won't be learning things here, but just on the top here to let you understand. Oh, so it's like that, so you get an idea of it. All right, so next, question four. So this is the Chile qualitative, and you have to know there are two qualitative, the qualitative assess and the qualitative, uh, no mistaken, the called the tingkat, right? Okay, is it called the tingkat? I'm so forgotten. Okay, let's check. Yeah, the tingkat. All right, so in the assess, there are two, and in the tingkat, there are four. Right, asas ada dua, and then tingkat ada tiga, I mean, sorry, empat. Okay, so now, look at this one. Menurut mestilah mudah difahami. Okay, so I told you the keyword. So when it's nampak mudah difahami, you don't have to think twice again. And you nampak ada jelas. So ini je lah, dalam ciri kualiti tertingkat, panggil keboleh fahaman. Alright Double check again. Ah, ini keboleh fahaman, mudah difahami dan dinyatakan dengan jelas. You see? So that's why I give you the keyword. When you see the keyword, you straight away know the answer. All right? Don't be too, keep memorizing the whole ayat. Like what is the definisi for uh keboleh fahaman? And then keboleh fahaman, yelah, ba 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 ba. You don't have to memorize it. You just go for the keyword. Okay, this is not pendidikan moral. Okay, dalam pendidikan moral, I used to remember that. Uh, remember that my teacher, okay, my jiku uh, pendidikan pendidikan moral. She will always made us memorize the definisi for each nilai. Let's say, uh, apa? Petanggung jawab. Okay, then you need to memorize the definisi and then the keyword. And then, apa lagi? Betola uh, anso. So, there are a lot of this nilai kan? Okay, siapa? You, you, you tahu tak? Who knows? If you know, you say yes. Uh, you know the all the dalam pendidikan uh, moral, you need to memorize the definisi because when uh, in the exam, other a few questions for subjective right so if i'm not mistaken then you have to put in the definisi or you have an ayat and then you need to write an essay and then in that essay you need to have those definisi to support your your fakta your huraian and conto correct ah? am i right yes or no right or wrong r i g h t if correct is you give me a right or correct right in a in a moral gun, if I'm not mistaken, I still remember. Yeah. So there, you need to memorize all the this all this fakta. Okay. But in accounting, you have to know that in accounting, in the paper, I always say 90% is all about the calculation. You need to know the technique, you need to understand the thing in order to calculate. If you don't understand, you just memorize you, it, it doesn't work. 
Okay, then only the remaining 10% is to memorize. And this 10% fakta memorizing is always uh, keboleh fahaman, you know? Okay, so uh, you don't have to memorize the whole ayat. You just need to remember what does it mean and also the keyword. Difahami, faham. Okay, now next. Maklumat dalam penyata kewangan tahunan uh, tahun semasa mesti boleh dibandingkan dengan uh, maklumat kewangan yang dikemukakan bagi tempo perekanan yang lepas. Boleh tak? Ini yang lewat. Boleh. Yes. You see the keyword. Boleh dibandingkan. So, this is keboleh banding. Keboleh bandingkan. Lah. Is it ke... Or keboleh bandingkan. Okay. So, keboleh bandingkan. So, Simple. Easy lah. If easy, give me an easy. E-A-S-Y. Easy. So, definitely it's very easy. Right? So, no excuse to get it wrong. Alright? Okay. So, that's uh, quite a summary for last class. So, now let's enter to today's uh, discussion. So today, this one is a bit, normally they ask quite often, like each exam, they might ask like a few, two to three questions. Okay. So now the first one is called entity berasingan. Okay. Now I will explain, go through one by one to explain to you what are these entity berasingan, what are these, um, this thing. Lah. Okay. So in accounting, in order to do accounting, there are a few things that we need to understand. It's like a concept. Like a principle or andayan or batasan. So these are all the andayan, the principle or we call it a concept and the batasan in accounting. Okay, so we come to the first one, entity person. What is entity person? Let's read the definition first. Menyimpan rekod transaksinya berasingan daripada rekod transaksi peribadi pemiliknya. Okay, even though your BM get 99 marks, okay, but I'm sure when you read this thing, you tak faham juga. <laughs> Alright, that's why accounting is a subject that you need someone to teach you. Okay, but of course, there are some students they can read by themselves. Okay, but like me, I need someone to teach me accounting. Okay, because I'm not a person that's very good at reading myself. Okay, I like someone to tell me and then I go and do and do the homework and make it perfect. All right, so for this entity blessing, you just have to know that in accounting or in a business, okay, there are two entities that you need to know. Entity is like what? It's like a person. Like a person. Orang. Okay, you need to know that in business, we have to break down to two orang, two person. One is the business, the peniagaan. Business. Okay, and then the other one is the pemilik. Most people think that if you are the permit, you are the boss, then you, the, the business and the boss are the same person. No. Okay? You have to know that because of this entity berasingan, we call it the, uh, well, the separation of entity. Okay? A legal entity separation, something like that. Okay? In English. So, meaning that two person, they, they are apart. You get what I mean? So, I don't care what the business earn. Okay? If the business untung banyak, yalah, business yang untung banyak. It's not the boss yang untung banyak. Okay, after, then, after that, then only they give, okay, they distribute the money to the boss, to the permile. Okay, then we have to record. Okay, why? Whatever, whatever that happens between the permile and the business, kita mesti record. 
Why? Because the business himself is business and the boss is boss. They are two different things. And when we are doing accounting, we are doing the accounting on the business. If I don't care if it is boss school or the pekerja, whoever he is, as long as they take something from my business or they give something to my business, I have to record it. Why? Because of this entity berasingan. So when you read it back again, okay, menyimpan record. Can you see it? Menyimpan record transaksi. Yeah? So whatever transaction is going on, okay, you have to record it. Okay, daripada record transaksi peribadi pemilik. That's the pemilik. All right, do you get it? So let's say the, the pemilik want to membawa masuk satu kereta. Let's say pemilik, the boss have, have a car. Okay, this is an old school Mercedes Benz. All right, so let's say the boss has an extra car and so uh, the timing so right and the business need the car. So the boss bring this car into the business. So let the business use, okay, for the use of the business, okay? So when this thing happen, okay, even though this peniagaan je lah boss punya, but since boss membawa masuk uh, this uh, creator, kita perlu record. Okay, we have to write it down. So, pemilik telah membawa masuk kenderaan uh, dalam perniagaan untuk kegunaan perniagaan. So, this is accounting. We need to record whatever it is. Whatever happens, we have to record. So, do you understand the first one? If yes, you give me a one. So this is called entity racing. So, we're going to use this along the counting line okay you're gonna see this many times later okay great now next yeah so this is the first one entity berasingan push it into your head okay next one usaha berterusan so beroperasi let me read it first beroperasi untuk tempoh masa yang tidak terpatas or oh, i bracket it operasi yang berterusan so this is uh it's more about operation, operasi. Okay, why is this usaha berterusan so important? Okay, whenever I talk about usaha berterusan, I will give my students example. Okay, then you tell me which one is better. All right, so now let's talk about burger. Okay, let's talk about burger, yeah? Okay, so now we got Kedai A, let's say panggil Kedai Burger. Okay. So this Kedai Burger draw burger lah, obviously. Okay. But this burger punya uh, masa operasi or we call it the, the time or the operation of time. Yelah, uh, tak ada Okay, what does it mean? Meaning, let's say Monday, I come to this shop and eat burger. I order chicken burger. Okay. Then I was like, after you try this chicken burger, mmm, that means very delicious. All right. So, very nice. Okay, so now sedap. Okay. So, now you plan to come back and eat again. Okay. So, on let's say Wednesday. Okay, you come back and eat again. You want to try, you want to eat uh, this burger again. But when you come to this area, you come to this shop, you go, hurry, you need to talk. Oh, it's all right. Okay, since they check up there to talk, maybe uh, that is their holiday, masa, masa uh, holiday, cuti. Okay, never mind. So I come back on maybe Thursday again. Eh, to talk lagi. You get what I mean? Okay, then suddenly, okay, so you come back on next Wednesday. He eh? book out or oh, then you believe. Okay, but then when you come on Friday, eh? dia tutup. Oh. You see, oh? meaning, dia punya, dia tidak apa, beroperasi secara, secara berterusan. 
dia punya tempoh masa adalah terbatas punya. Okay, therefore ini tak ada mengamalkan usaha berterusan. Okay, another example. Let's talk about McDonald's. Ah, does anyone here notice that McDonald's dia buka setiap hari, every day. Okay, and some more, most of the McDonald's mereka buka 24 hours before COVID. Ah, uh, now I think they open sudah buka balik. Okay, so now they come back to 24 hours again. So whenever you want to eat Mac burger, you go to McDonald's because you will know that McDonald's mesti lah buka punya. So now choose between which one would you go if you want to buy burger? Would you go to Kedai Burger atau you go to McD? Put it in the chat box. When you want to eat burger, which one will you go? McD. Kenapa? Kerana you drive all the way. Let's say ini. Let's say now you stay in Penang. Okay, you drive all the way to Gerda, and you dah buka. But you surely know that if you drive all the way to Gerda, you go to McDonald's, dia mesti buka punya. Therefore, that's why it's so important that kita mengamalkan usaha berterusan. You get it now? So that, that's why usaha berterusan maksudnya uh, beroperasi untuk tempoh masa yang tidak terbatas. Meaning, operasi yang berterusan. Which McDonald's ada usaha berterusan. Tapi kedai burger ni tak ada. So do you get it now? If yes, just give me a two. You faham number two for usaha berterusan. Give me two. Okay, very important ah. First, understand the concept of this thing first. All right. Then later we have to apply into the question. And later I'll teach you how to look at the keyword and straight away know the answer. But first, understand it. Okay. So now next number three. Okay, what is number three? Wang sebagai ukuran. Okay, this is very simple. Okay, just by reading the term itself, wang, and then sebagai ukuran meaning. What what is ukuran? Ukuran means measurement. Okay, and for us to perform, untuk buat accounting, and accounting is all about money. If you don't like dollars, maybe you can try pound. Okay, it's all about this do it money one. Okay, so to in order to buat satu accounting yang complete, okay, yang penuh, yang siap punya, kita mesti berkaitan dengan nilai wang. For example. Like contoh tadi, I say let's say the the pemilik membawa masuk kenderaan, okay. Tapi in accounting we cannot just say uh, membawa masuk kenderaan or satu ken satu unit kenderaan, cannot. Because of what? Because of this concept, one sebagai Ukuran. What is one meaning for this satu unit kenderaan? Apa tu ukuran untuknya? What is the measurement for this kenderaan? So we have to use money in terms of money, monetary value to measure this satu unit kenderaan. So now what we're going to do is we go and check the market value for this kenderaan. So you maybe go and check your as a salesman for kenderaan punya. You call Jeffrey, okay, Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey. So Jeffrey is an expert for all this car car dealer, okay. So you call uh, Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey. I want to check out for my uh, Merc ya yeah, yang sudah empat uh, puluh tahun ago, okay. So you tell him the condition about this car and then when you bought it, how many years ago. And then what is the model? Okay, then he'll tell you, okay, so kenderaan ini at current price, okay, uh, about mm, eh, 
Mm -hmm. Okay, 15,000 ringgit. Oh, okay. So now, after you ukukan, so now you put this 15,000 ringgit here. Meaning, this satu unit kenderaan adalah bernilai sebanyak 15,000. So I don't care what it is. If it is a computer, it must have a nilai. RM2000. If it is a... I don't care lah what, what it is. Lah. If bangunan, there is a nilai for it. Inventory, there's a nilai for it. Your bank account, how much? You have a nilai for it. Okay, do you get it? That's why. Wang sebab ukuran je lah, menyatakan nilai mata wang yang diguna pakai di sesebuah negara. And also depends on where you are at. If we are in Malaysia, kita guna ringgit Malaysia. So we guna RM. But if we are in US, kita guna US dollar. To ukurkan benda itu. That's why it is called wang sebagai ukuran. Do you understand? Yes, you give me a three. Ya. Okay. Right. Okay. Next. So simple. So when you see normally when you see this ring in Malaysia US dollar, one Okay, now four. Tempo perekanan. Okay, you have to know that in accounting, we have satu time frame. Okay, Tem kita panggil tempo perekonan. Okay, so dia, what does it say here? It says, pembahagian operasi dan aktif menengah kepada tempo masa yang ditengah untuk tujuan pelaporan. Okay, so uh, normally it is from, it is sebanyak satu tahun. Okay, let's say if your company bermula pada 1st January, then if the tempo perekonan ialah satu tahun, then dia akan tamat pada 31st December. Uh, that year lah, let's say it is 2020, then it will be 2020. So 1st January 2020 sampai 31st December 2022. Sorry, 22, 2022. Spin the firework. Okay, so first January 2022, sampai 31st December 2022, this is one year. Meaning, whatever happens between first January 2022 sampai 31st December 2022 will be the tempo per account. Hey, by the way, can you guys hear me clearly? Uh? Because they are playing the firework here. So you just tell me if it is clear or like uh, a bit noisy. Is, is it clear to you guys? Would, would it is there any noise? Uh, is it does it sound noisy just now? A yes or no, dear. Okay, if no, if noisy, then you give me a yes. If not noisy, then you give me no. I just want to double check that you can uh make sure you can hear me clearly. No, ah, uh, okay, very good, very good. Okay, so let me further explain this tempo break on because it's a bit you have to understand this thing. So that later we can do this, do all the question uh, smoothly. Okay, so you have to know that whenever we record, we have to equal tempo. We cannot say, okay, I just want to record like that and you record like that. Cannot. Okay, we, because of what? Kebole bandingan. You remember? Meaning, it has to be Muda dibandingkan. Okay. In order to be muda dibandingkan, you have to do it nicely. Okay. So, contoh. Let's say I buka satu company A. Okay. So, whenever I record, let's say I start from 1st January 2018. So, satu tahun normally is one year. So, it will be 31st December 2018. Okay, so whatever happens, okay, in between from 1st January, somewhere to the 1st December 2018, I will record here. Let's so say you buy a car in 2018, you record, okay, you, you sell a, a computer, you record here. 
Okay, you beli barang uh, niaga. You record here in 2018. Okay, then you record, record, and then you bought report. Okay, then we see, oh, so this year, then we have what, 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 what. Okay, then you move on. So this is satu tahun. Then you continue to do the same thing. 1st January 2019, sampai 31st December 2019. Okay, then you do the same thing. Whatever that happens in 2019, from 1st January, sampai 31st December 2019, you record in one uh, penyata. Can you see it? So now, when we want to record between 2018, I mean, we want to banding on 2018 and 2019, we can do banding on because the, the time is same from 1st January and sampai 31st December. It's just different year. So we can compare year by year. Okay, but let's say company B. So this is other tempo perekanan. Okay, let's look at company B. Ah. Dia start same, start in 1st January 2018. Okay, but dia record sampai 31st August 2018. Okay, then dia buat report. Then after that, from 1st September, because mesti continue punya, after 31st December will be 1st January ma, 2019. Correct tak? Okay, so now, after 31st August will be 1st September. So you start from 1st September 2018. Okay, then dia suka-suka. Okay, I will buat sampai uh, 28 February 2019. And then you do the record again. So from here, 1st January sampai 31st August is 8 months. 8 bulan. But then from 1st September sampai 28th February, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, it's just 6 bulan. So, do you think you can compare between these two? Boleh banding tak? Ini ialah 8 bulan punya benda. Ini hanya 6 bulan punya benda. But for company A, ini 1 tahun. Ini pun 1 tahun. So, which one is easier to compare? You tell me. A or B? Lebih uh, senang untuk berbandingan. Of course, it's A. Because you can compare like 1 year with 1 year. But for company B, Satu lapan bulan, satu enam bulan. How can you compare correctly? Betul tak? That's why we need tempo. So, company B, tak ada tempo per ekonan. Uh -huh. So, this is the importance of tempo per ekonan. And normally, when you're doing your question, is satu tahun. Okay? But for those bigger company, okay, if you heard of Genting, okay, the Genting group, ah, uh, this company they have to do every three months. Eh, every three months. Oh no, sorry. Every yeah, three months. So tap tiga bulan. So let's say from January sampai January sampai Jan Feb March. Okay, and then from April sampai June, and then from July sampai September, and then from October sampai December. Then you can see that there are three months, three months, three months, three months. So they can banding lah because betul lah, same period of time lah, but uh, same period of tempo pregnant. So they boleh buat bandingan. Three, three, three. So this one is one, one. But then this one is what? Eight and six. That boleh banding. Uh, okay, but normally in your question, we take satu tahun. Okay. So go back here. So do you understand now? Tempo perekonan, if yes, give me a four. So, pembahagian operasi dan aktiviti perniagaan kepada tempo masa yang ditentu untuk tujuan pelaporan. Alright, that is four for you. Now, we go to five ketekaulan. So, when you look at this, ketekaulan is more towards consistency. Dalam prosedur perekonan yang gunakan dari uh, satu tempo. So, contoh is kaedah susut nilai. Okay, how do I give this example for you? So, first thing you have to know that this is all ketekalan means consistency. Means consistency. What does consistency mean? Okay, contoh ah. Mm, 
let's say uh, you are a person. Okay, let's say starting from today. Okay, starting from today, you will um, use. Uh, let's say use what? I'm not sure. Okay, let's say you use iPhone. And let's say you used to use uh, Huawei. Okay, but then starting from the day you want to try to use iPhone. So you use iPhone. All right. Okay, so after you use iPhone, let's say iPhone 13 Pro Max. Okay. So let's say you're using, you want to use iPhone 13 Pro Max. So now what we are doing now is uh, you want to use this phone and you'll be using every day. Betul tak? Okay, you tak akan use iPhone 13 Pro Max on Monday and then the next day, Tuesday, you go and use Huawei. And then the third day, you come back and use iPhone again. When this kind of things happen, you will say, actually, iPhone is not good. It's not good. I don't, I think it's very uh, troublesome. Okay, sangat susah guna iPhone. Why? Because you want that you use iPhone and all the WhatsApp is here already, all the photo is here already, and suddenly Tuesday you go and switch to use Huawei. Of course, la, the, the photo is here, it's not here, and then you need to send all the photos into here again because maybe there are some homework, the question is in the photo, so you need to throw it into the Huawei, and then you do, 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 you do in Huawei, and then on Wednesday you want to use iPhone again, you need to switch to iPhone and submit the homework to your teacher. Do you get what I mean? So the, it's not consistent, what you're using is not consistent. So let's say if you're using Huawei every day, Ah, then you will feel that, oh, actually Huawei is the best. Why? Because you're using the same thing every day. So it is called consistency. Ketekalan. Kita suka-suka hati begitu ka to another thing. So suka-suka you change another thing. Do you get what I mean? So this is what we call ketekalan. Consistency. So when you use one thing, you use it every year. Just like in now, come back to accounting. So, there are a lot of methods in accounting. Okay, method or we call a kaeda. So, different accountant, different company, they practice differently. They use different kaeda. Okay, so maybe uh, company A, mereka suka kaeda A. And then company B, mereka sudah guna kaedah B. And then company C, dia suka guna kaedah A. And different company, they use different kaedah, different method to do something. Okay? So, this is year 2018. And when you come to 2019, then A should use the same kaedah for every year. You see or not? So, when they use the same kaedah, same chara, same method for something, this is we call ketegaran because there are other consistency. But then look at B, ah, sekarang, if B in 2018, they guna kaida B, and then in 2019, they go and use kaida A, and then 2020, go and use kaida B. Of course, you need the other ketegaran. No consistency. Just keep changing. Therefore, everything would be different. How do we know if this method is efficient, effective or not? Kita tak tahu because you keep Changing, just like your study method. Let's say today, you want to try a new study method. Okay, let's say you want to study two hours every day now. Okay, every day. So, so hurry, you want to study two hours. But then, you just do it two days. And then on the third day, you tak study langsung. Ada ketekalan tak? Tak ada. 
Can you see or not? Then when the exam come out, okay, the result come out, you fill your paper, and then you say, ah, do our study need the effective. But then it's not a, that is not the case because you satu hari tak study, satu hari study dua hours, and then the other hari, you langsung, you pergi main uh, LOL, you main uh, apa apa Valorian. Uh, uh. Kan? So, when you do something, you must have consistency. When you see you want to study two hours, you try to do it for one month. And then you see, ada dah ini efektif atau tidak. Same thing for here. So, when you do satu kaedah, you use it. AA, then AA sampai to the end. So, this is other ketegaran. And then for company B, satu B, satu A, satu B, tak ada ketegaran. So, come back to the thing. So, what is ketegaran? Ketegaran, you have consistency dalam procedure. Okay, cara buat perekanan. Yang digunakan dari satu tempo perekanan ke tempo perekanan yang lain. So, contohnya kaedah susunnya. So, this is one of the contoh for ketegaran. So, do you now understand ketegaran? Consistency? If yes, you give me a five, five, five. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so I will continue. Six principle cost. So principle cost, uh, we we'll call it a cost sejarah. So what is principle cost? Let me explain to you. Okay, so let's say now you. You buy a new car. I like to use car as an example. Okay. So let's say you buy a new car. Okay. So let's say this is a what is this? A, uh, this is a Rolls Royce. Okay, Rolls Royce. How do you spell it? Something like that. Okay, so let's say when you buy it now, let's say you buy it now. Huh? Okay, uh, is one million. Okay, RM satu juta, one million. Okay, this is harga. Berlin. Okay. So now is 2022. So when you record in your accounting, accounting record, this kendaraan, okay, this car, I will record it as 1 million. Okay, this is in 2022. Okay. But then you have to know that for cars, kenderaan, every year, dia punya nilai akan jatuh. And later, you will learn this in bab 8 in your perekanan, which we call uh, susut nilai. In English, we call it depreciation. Depreciation. Okay? Nilai setiap kenderaan akan jatuh every year. Okay? Let's say in 2023, dia jatuh nilai Jadi, let's say eight hundred thousand. Okay, so this is what we call need uh nilai uh market value lah. Okay, I say market value. Okay, so market value is eight hundred thousand ringgit. But when we are recording, I don't care about the market value. When I record the charter principle cost. Meaning, what is the cost of it? The cost is 1 million. When we buy, we buy with 1 million. Therefore, it will be 1 million. So when you see a 1 million, even though in 2023, walaupun other this is jatuh to 800,000, but I don't care. I still record it as 1 million. Why? Because I'm an amalkan principle cost. When you go to 2014, this jatuh sampai 400,000 ringgit. I don't care. I still record as 1 million because 1 million is saya punya cost. I believe in 1 million, therefore I record as 1 million. So this is what we call a principle cost. That's why here I say that you can also call it a what? A cost sejarah. What is cost sejarah? Sejarah meaning the 
Kuala history kan apa yang telah berlaku past tense right so what is the past what is the nilai kos yang sejarah 1 million yang saya beli that's why the definition here given is semua aset pendengar dinilai dan rekodkan berdasarkan harga sepenuh atau kos asal pembelian and you read this word all right so when the moment you buy the car that is the cost sejarah that is the principal cost that you will record in your uh, buku accounting okay bukannya nilai pasaran not the market nilai pasaran ialah market value atau nilai masa hadapan or the future value no it's not the value now nor the future uh, nor the future value we record the past value the, the value that we bought with which is the principal cost do you understand now if yes give me a six understand give me a six so always record cost asal pembelian so that is your principal cost now you go to seven it is called pengiktirafan hasil dan belanja okay you know what is iktiraf iktiraf means recognize Right, you recognize something. Okay, so here will be you recognize the hasil dan belanja. So this is very obvious. So when you see semua hasil dan semua belanja perlu diambil kira dalam penyata kewangan pada akhir tempoh pengenalan untuk mengetahui untuk bersih sebenar. So whenever you see hasil and belanja, you just record. So when you record, that is a pengiktirafan hasil dan belanja. Alright, and then the last one A will be cost manfaat. So cost is cost. You know what is cost, right? Manfaat means benefit. Or we call it a cost benefit. So cost benefit ialah cost penyediaan maklumat hendaklah tidak melebihi daripada nilai maklumat. Meaning, when we are recording, I mean, when we are doing something, when we are preparing something, okay, atau uh, menggumpukan maklumat, we need, sometimes we need resources, we need money to get resources. Okay, to get the maklumat, information. Okay, and this information that we get, the cost to get this information, cost untuk mendapatkan maklumat ini, tak boleh, tidak melebihi daripada nilai maklumat. Let's say your, the information is worth 1,000 ringgit. Okay, but you are not going to spend 2,000 ringgit to buy this information. No. Okay, because that will be tidak cost manfaat. What is cost manfaat? Meaning, let's say the information is 1,000 ringgit, you use 500 ringgit to get this information. And this is what we call cost manfaat. So in cost manfaat, we will use a minimum cost untuk mendapatkan maximum untung. You understand? So I want to use a minimum cost to get the maximum profit, maximum untung, maximum benefit, maximum manfaat. All right? Just like you study. Okay? People, they study 10 hours a day, only get 10A in the exam. Okay? But you want to be the one with minimum effort, meaning you only study two hours a day but you still can get 10a which one you want you want number one or you want number two tell me in the chat box you want one or two 10 hours is per day huh? you study 10 hours a day to get 10 a's or you just want to study two hours a day and you get a 10a as well of course people want to go for the number two right why because number two yeah, minimum effort or the minimum cost. What is the cost here? Your time. Okay, you use the minimum time to get the maximum result, the maximum profit. The profit here will be your 10 is your result. You get what I mean? So this is somehow a cost manfaat. So now do you get what is cost manfaat? If yes, you give me eight. Mm. Okay, now quickly, let's do the question together. Latehan question one. 
Okay, so um, make sure let's do, do uh, let's do together, yeah. Make sure you do together with me. Okay, so now nyatakan anda yang prinsip pembatasan perkenaan yang terlibat, yang terlibat ya dalam situasi di bawah. So look at A. Megan telah membawa masuk, so dia membawa masuk sebuah perabot peribadi untuk kegunaan perniagaan. Perkara ini telah direkodkan ke dalam akaun. You see now, Megan is a person and dia membawa masuk satu perabot peribadi and this thing telah direkodkan dalam akaun modal. So when you go back to here, what what it is? Menyimpan rekod transaksi. So if the answer is entity perasingan. Is it or not? Entity perasingan. Okay, so whenever you see membawa masuk or mengambil barang, okay, that, uh, whatever it is, it is entity perasingan. Or you see a permit here. Okay, these are all the keywords. Now, B. Guganesh menrekodkan perkara yang hanya dapat dinyatakan dalam nilai wang. Seperti jarang barang yang dalam bayaran sewa. Can you see now? Dia hanya rekod apa-apa yang dalam nilai wang. What is nilai wang? Contoh, if you are in Malaysia, that will be RM. Or US will be US dollar. So, what is the answer for B? Do you know what is the answer for B? Very simple. Go back to here, you check. Apa yang berkaitan dengan wang, nilai wang? Ah, betul, Shiva Shini. Wang sebagai ukuran. You see? When you, you just aim for the keyword. Wang sebagai ukuran. Okay, C. Penyata kewangan Google, is not Google, uh, is Google, disediakan bertasarkan semua urus niaga yang berlaku dari 1st February 2019 hingga 31st January 2020. Can you see or not? So whenever you see a time like this, you know that this is a tempo per econon. I'm giving all the keywords. Okay, so you look, you just highlight what I say here. So like uh, this, kegunaan, perniagaan, Membawa masuk, this is anti -basingan. When you see a nilai wang, definitely this is a wang sebagai ukuran. When you see a date like this one, you know that this is actually a tempo per accountant. Okay, now we go to donkey. Semua hasil, when you see hasil. Okay, dah tahu belum terboleh diambil kira oleh syarikat semasa membuat penghitungan undung bersih peningan. So what's the answer for this? So when you see hasil or belanja, you still we know that this is a peng Tirafan, hasil, dan belanja. Okay, you need to write the whole thing. Yeah? Even though dalam seolah hanya ada hasil, but this is the whole term. Pengitirafan, hasil, dan belanja. Okay? So, are you guys okay so far? If okay, give me okay. Are you following or not? Give me okay. You're following. So now I'm giving you all the keyword. When you see the keyword, you know what to write. You know what's the answer. Okay? That's very straightforward. So when you understand, this is why I say first you understand the, the concept first. And then when I give you the keyword, then you can show a score for this, uh, this type of question. Okay, now let's go for E. Karen telah membuat keputusan untuk membeli sebuah bangunan baharu dan dijangka dapat meninggalkan keuntungan untuk beberapa tahun akan datang. Okay, this is a bit tricky. Alright, so let's read again. Karen telah membuat keputusan untuk membeli sebuah bangunan baharu. So, they, they want to buy a new building. Okay, dan dijangka. Okay, uh, forecast. Jangka is to forecast. Uh, dapat meningkatkan keuntungan untuk beberapa tahun. So, here, what does it mean? You spend a cost here. And then for a uh, untung, this is your manfaat. Is it not? So therefore, this answer is cost manfaat. It's not principal cost. Okay, principal cost here lah. They will talk about record. Okay, for the 
uh, pembelian, uh, nilai pembelian asal. Alright, but a good try. Okay, but the answer is cost manfaat. Because they buy, when you buy a bangunan, this is your cost. Okay, but why do you buy a bangunan? Because you want to untung in the future. Okay, you want to make manfaat. So this is a cost manfaat. Okay, do you understand? If yes, give me a yes. All right, all right. Let's go to F. Joe, pemilik Joe's restaurant merekokkan bayaran insurans peribadi dengan menggunakan wang penyegan. Okay, this one you have to be very careful. Okay, the keyword here is the peribadi. Normally, when you see peribadi, okay, you know that this is entity personal. Yes, very good. Okay, and when you read it again, you may record kan. Okay, the buyer issues. What is peribadi? Peribadi means sendiri. Take note of it. When you see peribadi, it means sendiri. So the buyer insurance sendiri, meaning Joe's insurance owns insurance, dengan menggunakan wang peniagaan. Yeah, Joe is using his restaurant punya money. To pay for his own insurance, ah, so now because of that thing happens, I said when this kind of thing happens and you record that is called an entity person and do you still record on account? I'm done. But that so the keyword whenever you see a peribadi or account ambilan or a modal tambahan, you know. A modal account ambulan or a mo account modal, all this normally will result in entity berasingan. Right? Okay, now G. Ifa mengandaikan penegangan Ifa yang tidak bukan akan terus. Uh, Shall we tell you the terus beroperasi untuk tempo yang tidak dipatah? Shall we give the answer? So when you see terus beroperasi, yes, Harish. The answer is usaha berterusan. Keyword, terus beroperasi, or uh, tempo yang tidak terbatas. Okay, now you the H. Sebuah kenderaan yang dibeli dengan harga 150000 pada tahun 2008 masih lagi direkodkan sebagai 150000 dalam PKK pada 31 Disember. Walaupun harga pasaran kenderaan yang sama, uh, sama modal telah disusut kepada 18000 Can you see or not? Okay, just already gave you the uh, the conto, okay. Even though the harga dia sudah jatuh, but we still record dengan harga yang dibeli. So this is yes, Shiva Shini and Harish are right. The answer is principal cost. Huh? This is the conto for principal cost. Do you all get it? If yes, you give me yes in the chat box. Right, so this is very obvious. When you record, still record at the price that you bought with, that is principal cost. Okay, very good now. We go to I. It is Land Asia Berhad. It's not Air Asia. Okay, by the way, do you know that Air Asia, the name of the company Air Asia, they have changed it to become, they used to call Air Asia Berhad. And now I think they, they change it to Capital A, Berhad. Uh, why? Because Air Asia, they have Air Asia airline. All right. So, because of this pandemic, during this pandemic, COVID 19, the airline has been stopped operating. And what they did during this uh, pandemic is they tried to be like grab. Okay, they deliver food through their Air Asia or something. Okay, do you know that they deliver food and uh, those um, vegetables, fresh vegetables to the to customers, to those who, are, who bought it? So now they actually have a few different businesses. So they don't want to call it Air Asia Bahad anymore because Air Asia is about airline. That's why they changed their name. I think, was it this year? I think last year, last year end. 
to capital A Berhad. Capital A Berhad. And so here they got a food business, they got uh, airline business, you know, and different businesses under it. All right. So come back to here. This that's just for your uh, general knowledge. Okay, come back to here. Number I, this is land Asia Berhad. Okay, dia tidak bercadang untuk menukar kaedah susun nilai aset bukan semata. So when you see, dia tidak menukar kaedah, this is, yes, this is ketekalan. Mean they are consistent. Mereka tak tukar their method kaedah. All right, now we go to J. Fazi telah menerima the electric pada tahun 8 Feb, uh, April 2020, namun demikian bayaran hanya dibuat pada bulan Mei, bulan Mei. Walaupun dia itu belum dijelaskan pada bulan April, Fazi telah mengiktiraf Okay, bill electric tersebut dan direkod dalam akaun kadar bayaran sebagai belanja. So, when you see all this mengiktiraf, you see belanja, this is Hmm. Is it clear or not? If clear, give me a clear. So this is done so for everything. So, so far, clear or no clear? Clear, yeah? Good. Let me... Okay, now. Let's do two. I give you one minute. Go through the question. Give it time. If you can, you quickly do them. After that, I will discuss with you now. Okay? Quickly. Question two. Do it now. I give you uh, two minutes. Uh, all right? Two minutes. So it would be nine thirty-four. I'll start discussing. All right. Wait, why am I? Okay, wait, sorry. Nine thirty-four. Nine thirty-five. Okay. So you just have to go, just have to pick for the keyword and then straight away do it. Don't have to like uh, read one by one and so on, All right? And do not. Okay, one more minute. Quick, quick. Okay, so that's that, yeah? Okay, A, very simple. Mengambil barang untuk kegunaan anaknya perkara ini telah direkodkan dalam account ambilan. This answer is entity ber 
Asingan. You see, you guys are so good. All right? Yep, Tivina and Hema. Answer is entity berasingan. Okay, by the way, it's not entity. Okay, this, this is English, okay? Now we are BM. So I believe it is typo. So it's entity, T-I-T-I. -T -I, okay? So now we'll go to B. Perkongsian J and C membuat keputusan membeli sebuah komputer yang lebih moden dan dijangka meningkatkan keuntungan perkongsian untuk beberapa tahun akan datang. So when you beli a computer, it is a cost and a keuntungan. There is a manfaat from it. Therefore, the answer is cost manfaat. Very good, Emma, Teren, Shivashini, and Tivina. Okay, so the answer is cost manfaat. Is it very straightforward? So when you catch the pattern, you see the pattern, it's almost the same. Look at, uh, what was it? The cost manfaat. Yeah, question E. You see, they believe something and then they jangkakan meningkatkan keuntungan. Uh, there is your uh, cost manfaat. So it's almost the same thing. Now we go to C. Heidi menyediakan penyata kewangan setiap enam bulan untuk mengetahui prestasi perniagaan. So when you see enam bulan, okay, this is not a ketekalan, okay, this is actually a yes tempo perekanan. Okay. Whenever you see a katakala, normally they link it, the keyword to kaeda. Okay? Whenever you see macam enam bulan, time, satu tahun, beloved to be the, is more towards tempo per ekana. Do you understand? If yes, you give me a yes. Okay, good, good. All right, now go to D. Sam menyediakan per penyata kewangan dengan mengiktirafkan semua belanja very obvious the answer is pengiktirafan hasil dan belanja yes yes good excuse me now go to e okay jiku adam or adam mengenakan bayaran RM90 bagi setiap pelajar yang datang untuk subjek matematiknya. Okay, let's see what your answer is. Hari say is wang sebagai ukuran. He must say it is wang sebagai ukuran as well. Tiran say so too. Tivina say so too. Yes, very good. The answer is wang sebagai ukuran. Because when you say bayaran, how much? You come for tuition. How much? So when there is a RM ringgit 90 for this tuition, for this fee. Oh, can you see that? So there is a nilai to ukukan satu benda. So that's what we call wang sebagai ukuran. Now we go to F. I think F is very easy. Sebuah perabot perniagaan dibeli oleh kedai cherry pada tahun 2012 dengan harga uh, 300,000 ringgit. Selepas 5 years, okay, perabot mengalami susun nilai. Dan nilai pasalnya ialah 10,000 or should be, not 300, should be 30,000 dan 10,000. Okay. Dalam PKK, perabot tersebut telah direkodkan sebagai 30,000. So, this is still at the harga berlian. Correct. So, when you're still recording at the harga berlian, this is what we call the principle. cost. See, you guys got it. Very good. So that's why I say you need to understand the principle first, and then when you see the keyword, so we can get it. Okay, now we go to G. Lin telah membawa masuk tunai ten thousand ke dalam. When you see membawa masuk, sure we know that this is a entity berasingan. Oh no, it's so easy now. Last one H. Herman or Herman tidak bersetuju dengan cadangan perkongsinya mem Bahawa, okay, perkongsian yang bahawa mengubah kaedah pengirangan susut nilai asal bukan semasa kerana ini akan memberikan kesan kepada penyata kewangan. Yes, when you see a kaedah, mengubah kaedah, tidak mengubah kaedah. This is a ketekalan. Full stop. So, you know all this thing? You can do it. Uh, how many questions here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 out of A. 
See, so simple. Is it that? If easy, you give me easy. Easy. But sadly, a lot of Form 5 students, they still don't know how to do this part. All right? Because uh, either they didn't pay attention during class or they, they don't know. Lah, okay? So for you to understand this part and know every question's uh, answer, very good already. Okay? Meaning you are actually a step ahead of a lot of students, included the Form 5 students. Okay, so uh, okay, so that that's that's it. Okay, then let's continue. So now quickly we go and explain this entity Ponegans. Actually, there's nothing much because uh they won't test you everything here because this is very valley a lot information. I mean valley, very and a lot of information from here. And uh we don't expect the students to memorize all the things here. So I'll just explain briefly to you because as uh, we go down, okay, I'll come back to this again. Okay, so this is entity perniagaan. And what is entity perniagaan? Okay, I told you entity is a person, right? Okay. So you have to know that there are actually different type of people in the whole world. I mean, in terms of... Uh, I'll, I'll use razor, okay? So let's say, uh, I'll give a chontoa. Let's say uh, in Malaysia, okay? We got Chinese, Malay, Indian, and then the Sarawakian. All right? So even though they are, we are all a human, right? In scientific term, a human or a person, okay? But there's a difference in us. So my skin is a bit, uh, let's say, whiter, okay? And then maybe uh, that's how I look for, uh, for Chinese. And then the Malay have a different look, Indian have a different look, and then uh, Sorokian have a different look. And then we have a different culture, okay? So, but then we are all living in Malaysia, so we are all the same, okay? Equal. So that's what it means for this entity penegaan, okay? So... There are different types of business. All right. So it depends on what kind of business you want. And each type of business, or we call it entity penegaan, they have different culture. Uh, you have different rules. You have different, uh, what do you say, structure, character. You get what I mean? Okay, now let's start from Milikan Tunggal. And most of what uh, most of the syllabus in our form four, form five are more towards, I mean, in the starting, we go from Milikan Tunggal first. Okay, because Milikan Tunggal so far is the easiest. Okay, and Milikan Tunggal in English, we call it, let me erase this so that I can write the term on it. So, uh, Milikan Tunggal is called sole trader, or they call sole proprietor. Okay, so normally we call it sole trader, meaning for this one, what is the characteristic? You can only have one per mile, satu orang per mile sahaja. Ah. You see, so it depends on what kind of business. Everyone can do business, but first, which type of business are you registering? Because we have to follow law. And each company runs differently. So, uh, Milikan Tunggal has its own laws, which is under Akta Pendaftaran Perniagaan. You see or not? So you we go fight we go by the Akta Pendaftaran Penegan. And in this, this Akta Pendaftaran Penegan for Milikan Dunga, you can only have one boss, one per mile. Okay? And all the model, all the money will be the Sumangan Ole per mile himself. Is it not? Because it's just one per mile, one boss, definitely. All the money will be the Sumangan sponsor. Okay, 
by this one boss, one per melee. Okay, now next, liability deduct the heart later first, okay, because you need some time to explain it. Okay, and of course, one good thing about this uh, Milligan Tunggal is you will get to enjoy all the untung. Nampak tak? All the keuntungan akan dinikmati sepenuhnya oleh pemilik. So let's say you start a Milligan Tunggal. When you earn money from this business, you can all you can have all the untung. You can have all the profit by myself. But at the same time, because you have all the untung, at the same time, you may have all the rugi. You need to tanggung all the rugi. That's one. That's why there's one saying goes like, high risk, high return. So if you want high return, then your risk will be higher. You know what I mean? Therefore, if you want to tanggung, you have, want to have enjoy all the keuntungan at the same time, if your business go wrong, you will have all the, you have to tanggung all the career. No one is going to share with you because you are the, Okay, and next. Okay, then is uh, the Uruskan, Pengurusan. By the way, can you guys hear me? Because I think there's something wrong. Can you hear me? Yes or no? Okay, let's continue. So, then Pengurusan. Pengurusan meaning the management. Siapa yang meng uruskan perniagaan ini. So, dia akan diuruskan oleh pemilik sendiri. Ya. And sometimes, it will be dibantu oleh ahli keluarga atau saudara. So, normally, this one business you can see where? In all the kedai runcit or buku kedai. Uh, all this, like at the roadside, you go there and you sometimes go and beli uh, roti, you beli... Uh, Coca-Cola, okay, one small shop there, a kada runcit, and then go and see uncle there, a pak chik mak chik. Uh, all this normally are milikan tunggal. And you see that, oh, their son, their, their daughter is helping them out uh, there. So this normally is, you know, milikan tunggal. All right, so do you understand what is milikan tunggal now, so far? If yes, give me the empty, milikan tunggal for empty. So this is normally a, a small business, uh, let's say. A very, very, very small. Okay. And in our Sukatan Pelajaran, okay. So in you see all this in uh, Bab 7, Bab 8, Bab 9, in your Form 4. And in Form 5, normally we see in uh, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So next. What is E-A-S-M-T, meaning easy milikan tunggal, right? Okay, then now we go to perkongsian. Okay, perkongsian means partnership. Kongsi what? Partnership in English. It is so trader, this is partnership. Okay, so there are two kinds of perkongsian. A normal type of partnership. So the the milik, the pemilik, the boss can be 2 to 20 people all right can be two maximum 20 but when you talk about professional professional can be two up to 50 what are the professional contoh accounting firm law firm clinic uh, all these are profession accountant lawyer doctor engineer okay all these profession they can go up to 50 per consent but if normal biasa punya perkongsian, let's say uh, today me and Jeffrey and Bob, three of us, we suddenly feel like, okay, we want to open buka satu restaurant. Ah, so restaurant ini panggil restaurant Wong, W, Bob, WB, Jeffrey, WBJ, restaurant WBJ. Okay, so this restaurant ialah satu perkongsian, perkongsian biasa. Is it not? But let's say if Saya, Wong, Bob and Jeffy, we want to book us to accounting firm. We are all accountant. We want to book us to accounting firm and want to register under Pekongsian. Uh, then that will be a Pekongsian professional. And we can invite more friends come together uh, to join us and we can uh, join up to 50 of us. All right. And because now kita are partners, 
Therefore, the Sumba model, okay, the resource will, the resources will be come by all this perkongsi. We will be share, sharing. Okay, so I keluar 10,000, Bob keluar 10,000, Jeffy keluar 10,000. But if it's just, Mindikam Dunga will be everything. I have to collect myself. I have to collect 3,000. Is it? Okay, then we skip this first. Okay, this is important. Later, I'll explain. And the Akka definitely will be different. Akka Pukumusian 1961. Okay, so it has its own rule. And for keuntungan, now, akan diagegan kepada para Pukumusi. Is it? Now? Tadi ialah semua ditanggung oleh satu orang. Dinikmati sepenuhnya oleh satu orang. But here, all the untung rugi, either untung atau rugi, akan diagegan para pekongsi. Okay? And then, dia akan diuruskan. Management will be managed by oleh pekongsi aktif. Okay? These are all the active pekongsi. Okay? Siapa ialah yang passive? Passive ialah all the sleeping partner. What are the sleeping partners? I mean, these partners, they don't run the business. Okay, let's say I'm, I'm the Pekongsi active, so I run the business. But Bob, Bob and Jeffrey, they are not. They are sleeping partners. They are Pekongsi passive, meaning they don't do anything. They're just sleeping at home, go and, kaki, go and play golf with their friends. And then sometimes they come in the office and then, uh, you know, talk, chat with the people, talk, chat with clients for a while, and then they will leave. They will go home early, something like that. They don't run the business. All the profit will be handled by me. They will stand only for Gongsi Active. All right? And if you want to learn more about this, we'll be learning this in Tikkatan 5 Bab 4. All right? So still have a long way. Okay. Now, the third one, Shaikabar. And this is more common. All right? More common. Lah. Okay. So there are two types of Shaikabar. Hat. Syarikat Sendian Berhad and Syarikat Awam Berhad. Okay, Syarikat Sendian Berhad, you will see. Yes, I'm sure you're pretty sure you've seen before. SDN BHD Sendian Berhad. Have you seen this before? Yes or no? Sendian Berhad. You see satu company punya nama and then SDN BHD at the back. Alright, so oh, these are Sendian Berhad and they can have 1 to 50 orang and if the company are big enough, okay, they can move on to become a Syarikat Awam Berhad and in this Syarikat Awam Berhad from 2, starting from 2, sampai no limit. Tidak terhad. Okay, you can have as 100, 200, 300, 1,500, 500,000, 1 million, okay, can be, can have a lot of per million. Normally, the per million for this uh, Syarikat Syarikat Awam Berhad, they call it a shareholder. So you, and contoh will be Genting lah. So anyone can be a shareholder in Genting. What else? Uh, Air Asia. Uh, all these big, uh, bigger company lah. All right. What else? Um, let's say, so what, what are the big company lah? Uh, Maybank. Uh, Maybank. All these Maybank are uh, Awam Berhad. So you see Maybank Berhad, Genting Berhad. Then just now I told you right, Asia, they changed them to Capital A Berhad. So whenever you see Berhad, 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 they are Syarikat Awam Berhad. Okay, and then when you see Sendian Berhad, these are a, a smaller, medium company. All right, and this model akan dikumbu daripada pemegang saham. Pemegang saham is shareholder lah. So they, the shareholder will invest money into this company. Alright. And then, ah, uh, you see. Now, a liability to heart. Tadi ya liability to heart. Hold on for a while. And then, mereka register under Akta Syarikat. Can you see? They use different Akta. Meaning, their rules will be different. They, are, they have different law. Okay. And then, the, this keuntungan akan diagihkan kepada para pemegang saham dalam bentuk so they will um, give this untung to these people. Normally, they don't share the rugi. You see or not? America tak cakap uh, rugi. But for this one, the rugi and kemunungan akan di, di, uh, diagikan kepada pemilik and this as well, per, uh, perkongsian. But this one, normally, they don't have to pay if it is rugi. 
Okay, and then ini ada diuruskan oleh ahli lembaga pengarah. You heard of board of directors? So normally these are run by the board of directors, the company, the senior berhad and the berhad. So you have CEO, CFO, uh, and then you got director of marketing, director of finance. Okay, so what normally see director, 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 they will only appear in syarikat. Okay, in this senior berhad or berhad. Okay, and then we learn this in bab lima. But in Form 4.5, we won't learn much about this. We we'll just learn a little bit only. And in Bab Lima, we are learning about Saham a bit. Okay. And then lastly is Koperasi. Koperasi is uh, about 50 to no limit. And then uh, modal dikumpul daripada anggota. Okay, melalui fees. So I'm pretty sure you know what is Koperasi. Even in your school, you got Koperasi. Normally, Koperasi is like club. Club tanpa satuan. All this club, you see, they have members, a lot of members, and they will ask the members to pay five ringgit fee or ten ringgit fee as a uh, you run kemasukan. All right, so this is where the money comes from. The modal gun disumber gun daripada fee masuk dan jualan saham, or sometimes you see they they jual something right. So these are all the fee, and then they will use akta koperasi, and then uh, the keuntungan akan. So normally at the end of the year, if this is a money making, a bit money making corporacy. They will give you dividend. Okay, so some school, I, I, I know my school got lah, used to have this uh, corporacy and then they will give back some money. They will ask people to invest uh, like 10 ringgit, okay, into the, the corporacy. And then by the year end, they will give back maybe 50 ringgit or 40 ringgit, something like that. Okay, so that, that is a dividend. Okay, then uh, they, uh, then they have this agong meeting. You will see the masyarakat agong dahunan, and then they will elect. They will say, "Siapa nak buat pengurusi, naik pengurusi, AJK, ah, setiap usaha." You see, so they will vote for it. Then later, they will this corporasi will be run by these people lah. Okay, and then we learn about corporasi in bab six. So far, okay or not? Are you following? If yes, give me a following. So a lot of fakta, fakta. So I know it's boring. But uh, just for the sake of explanation, and then after that, uh, we will enter into BAP 2. BAP 2, we will do a lot of calculation. All right? So are you following? Yes, it's almost the end of the class. So make sure you are following, you are awake. All right. So the rest, are you following? Okay, so quickly, before the class ends, let me explain this liability tidak terhad and liability terhad. Then you'll be wondering, okay, if syarikat berhad, can one person, you, you see that limit can start from one, and the milikan tunggu also one, then kenapa kita don't go here? Or why not everyone come to milikan tunggu instead of uh, senyam berhad? Uh, you'll be wondering. So the one key thing is this one. Liability tidak terhad. So what is liability tidak terhad? Meaning, your liability is unlimited. Meaning, okay, contoh. Let's say you are under milikan tunggang and perkongsian. These two are liability tidak terhad. Lah. So let's say uh, you bought business. Okay, you bought, 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 and then you rugi. Rugi, rugi, rugi. And then you hutang banyak orang duit. You hutang bank duit. Okay, to the point that you hutang sebanyak RM 1 juta, 1 million. Oh, banyak. Okay, when you hutang sebanyak RM 1 juta ini, because all this keuntungan dan kerugian mesti apa? Ditanggung sepenuhnya oleh pemilik atau ditanggung oleh perkongsi. Therefore, if you ada rumah, kereta, Let's say the rumor is 500,000. This house is 200,000, 300,000. And then this car is 100,000. Okay? Then the bank, you come and take all your houses and car and sell them and pay for themselves. That's what the bank would do. Even though all these houses and cars are yours. For Mile Bunya. But because your business, you are either milikan tunggal or perkongsian because the liability ada tidak terhad. What is liability? Liability means hutang. 
So your hutang can deduct. So for your hutang to be not limit, meaning there must be some guarantee. Therefore, if you can't pay back the money, the bank will come and take your stuff, take your properties, take your shirt, take anything. If you have a watch, Rolex, 50,000 ringgit, even though it's just you're wearing it, but the bank will come and take it because it is of something valuable. And when they sell it, they can pay back for your hutang, your liability. That's why sometimes this kind of milikan tunga and pokongsen is a bit scary. All right? That's why they introduced another thing called Sharikat Bahad. So what is this Sharikat Bahad? They have this liability terhad. What is liability terhad? Meaning it is limited. Okay? So how does it work? So let's say same thing for your Sindhya Bahad or Koperasi. You hutang 1 juta ringgit Malaysia. You don't have money to pay back. But you got same house, 500,000. Same another house, 300,000. Another car, 100,000. Okay, even though you have all these things, the bank cannot come and take your property. No. Because your company is registered under Sendian Berhad. And under Sendian Berhad, after Sharikat, they say the liability adalah terhad. Therefore, even though you have all the houses, you have the property, but the bank, you have the Rolex, but the bank cannot come and take it from you. Because this is your thing. And here is already said labi tahat. But if it is labi tiyat tahat, then they can take. So this is the difference between labi tahat and labi tahat. I mean labi tiyat tahat and labi tahat. Do you understand? Yes or no? Yes, you give me a yes. No, you give me a no. Yes. Sure. Okay. Very good. So that's all for today. And before you leave, maybe I'll give you, I will let you finish the rest of the question. So just a few more, like uh, like five and six. All right. So these are the, the remaining two questions. And then this is just to calculate the year. Lah. Okay. So Satu Tahun, this is Pamula, meaning the starting. And then this is the RQ ending. So you count. Lah. So Satu Tahun before you work back. So when does it start? And then satu tahun selepas ini will be by when, okay. And then enam bulan will be when. And okay, then this is the entry penegan. You look at it and then you put it in. All right. So that's all. There's two questions uh, for today. So very little only. And last but not least, make sure you have this book already. Okay. This is the book that I asked you all to get. Okay. This is a form four one. So if you haven't gotten it, make sure you get it uh, now. Okay, because in next class, I'm going to use this book. All right, so all the homework will be from here. Okay, are you clear? If clear, give me a clear. C-L-E-A-R, clear. Okay, so after you type a clear, I know it's the end of the day, after the school and so on, after end the tuition, busy day. Okay, so you may leave and you're going to have a rest and good rest okay and i'll see you in next class make sure you do all your homework and bye bye take care